There was a problem statement that was put in from Bosch Engineering and Business Systems. And it was specifically how can they accomplish capabilities with a blockchain for automotive supply chain. And what they were really looking for in the final analysis was auditing of the entire supply chain for the end customer, for the dealer, for the manufacturers, and all the way down for visibility into the raw material supplier uh, and ensure that it, the metal that was used in order to make the screw that's in the motor mount on your car complies with the specifications necessary for it to be in there, right? So all of these things, which aren't really available today, what we came up with and what we actually created was a full digital thread, which is another thing that manufacturing and industry has really been looking for, that they have a holistic view of the entire supply chain, all of the parts that are integrated within to any one product or device itself. So this is what the outcome was. Now it's not complete, because it was for a hackathon and we got so far. All the code to do all of the functions is, is there and it's available uh, as open source for anybody to look at and play with, but it's not necessarily implemented within this. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk through some of the functions that aren't implemented and you'll be able to grasp how they are. So the first thing is this, is, this would be the view of the dealer. And as you see, they have not gotten any cars yet from their upstream suppliers, Ford or GM, and they, they haven't sold any cars, so there's no downstream. Um, I'm going to, a couple of things here. This right here, this number here, you'll see on every single uh, item that you, that you view, and each one is globally unique and will never be repeated. Mm -hmm. And this is very important because this establishes the ability to have all 7 billion people and every single uh, entity organization in the world to have their own uh, unique 256-bit string of uh, random alphanumeric characters uh, that will never be repeated. So that is your identity, almost like your social security number, uh, the VIN number on your car. All of these different things are now represented in a 256-bit string and are part of your account. So anything that you own uh, would be a subset of your overall account unique ID. The, there's two buttons that do work on here, and one of them is new part. Um, what that is, is that is a fungible asset, as we call them. There are no tokens necessary within this system because you can actually move possession of, of an item from one account to another account. We uh, eliminate smart contracts by implementing this extensible blockchain object model, or as people are starting to understand now, a global operating system. So uh, new part is a uh, fungible asset. That means that we can fractionalize it. We can make a, a batch of them, 10,000 parts or something, and we can fractionalize that and separate them and, and uh, move them to different accounts. Um, and a non-fungible asset would be one where there's only one unique item. And although new assembly is built from a fungible asset, in actuality, it becomes a non-fungible asset in this case, in this instance, an assembly, the final assembly would be the, the vehicle, the car. And there will only be one number associated with that car. However, all of the parts and assembly can be made up of assemblies. Assembly can be made up of parts, right? It depends on, there may be somebody that's, manu that's actually assembling the engine that GM is putting in the car, right? So that would be an assembly in an assembly. So that, though, turns out to be a non-fungible token, basically, or in, in the uh, we call a non-fungible asset, because the car itself will be just that one I unique identification number, just like your VIN number. It's replacing, basically, the VIN number on your vehicle, um, just digitally. So I can go into any one of these different accounts, and as you see now, we're in Ford's, again, unique ID. Now we see a much more uh, a broader view because the upstream suppliers for Ford. Uh, and in the Bosch uh, problem statement, it said three suppliers and do three parts each. So it won't be a fast car. In fact, it'll be you carrying a wiper blade, a, uh, a, a steering wheel and a spark plug uh, as you're walking down the street. But in 
the digital world, this is a car in the metaverse, right? <laughs> and then downstream, as you see now, there is a customer here because of the fact that the dealer is a customer of the OEM, of the manufacturer itself. The dealer does not have any customers because they haven't bought a car from Ford yet and haven't moved it down. Now, if we go into any one of these accounts and the supplier, again, you see no upstream suppliers. They have rubber trees in their backyard and they, they mine all their own uh, metal. Mm -hmm. um, however, you see the assemblies and the parts that they do have uh, in their inventory, which is available right now for Ford or GM in order to purchase. Again, as I stated, new parts are uh, fungible assets. And so there's, say, 10,000 wiper blades in this batch. All 10,000 of those wiper blades will always be referenced back to this ID number. So you always know what which batch it came from, and that will never be confused with wiper blades that ever came out of another batch. That's and any of the upstream suppliers that have a certificate, say for the composition of the rubber in the, in the blades, uh, the metal um, or the, the ceramics, whatever used in the spark plugs, each of those things, that number will always be associated with this number batch. It would be showing here and you would see it going all the way through. Now say that GM or Ford, they buy, uh, they wipe out the wiper blades, what you do now is they go ahead and they make 10,000 more wiper baits. Now they have a physical asset or a physical piece that they need to add into inventory and make it available for GM and Ford. All you do is hit new part and I can go in now and I can do new wiper blades and whatever this is. Now realize, even though this is an uh, automotive supply chain demo, this could be a cosmetic supply chain, pharma supply chain. I, we don't care what you call these things, right? What we're giving you is the underlying code to make that asset in the blockchain, but you're defining what that asset is. You'll never write a smart contract again, don't have to. And what you do to, is just create part. You would have a certificate, your SKU, whatever you want in there, but this could also be a bank and this can be an account and it can be all of the assets or all the transactions that ever happened with, between you and the bank. But this time it's immutable on the blockchain, right? I don't have to call the bank anymore and say, what are, what are these different charges from, right? Because they associate completely through. So we're the foundation in order to do this, but you would just create part. And now that would have a new part and they would have a new uh, uh, wiper blade listing and uh, a new uh, 256 bit hash for that batch of wiper blades. You can really start to imagine what you can do with individuals and with businesses on here and what it gives you as far as the overall ownership or the possession of your assets and your life and every transaction you ever did belongs to you and nobody else.